Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bad Ideas Garage. My name is Steven and with me today is this beautiful, wonderful, and very crazy 2017 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat. It's a little bit of a mouthful there. I finally get a chance to drive one of these cars. I remember when they first came out, uh, a friend of mine who's an automotive journalist, Joel Fetter, had a chance to drive a Challenger Hellcat and we got to take it to PIR. I took this really awesome picture. It got featured on the internet, which was really cool. Made me feel like a big deal, but I really had not had a chance to drive anything like this myself until a couple of weeks ago when my friend Colton, who owns this car, we were at a wedding, and of course, as one does as a wed at a wedding, rather than paying attention to what's going on, we went on a very, very brief drive in the back roads, and it was amazing. Now, he tells me that he is looking to potentially buy a TRX, and I said, hey, before you go and sell the Hellcat, would you let me drive it? And he said, absolutely, and so that's what we're going to be doing in our review today. So I'll be going over some of the features of this vehicle and give a little bit of a tour of what you get when you get the Hellcat versus a regular Dodge Charger. I did do a Dodge Charger video already. I'll put that link in the description below. That was rental car spec. It was the V6. It still had 300 horsepower, but that's a very, very different vehicle than what you get here. I also did a beautiful video of a lovely 1991 Plymouth Acclaim. I'm sure that you are all very excited about that. I'll put that also in the description below just in case you want to see what Chrysler was making in the early 1990s. As always, we appreciate you watching the Bad Ideas Garage. Make sure and like and subscribe below. I'd really appreciate that. I hope that you enjoy our videos. We hope to have some more Mopar content coming up. I have a couple of friends with some very fun Mopar products that have already said that I could do a video for them. So like and subscribe below. We'll get those videos to you soon. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs> Surprise! So you might think that this looks like the rest of the Dodge Chargers that were made in this era. However, some distinguishing features, they really add up to make this a very special car on top of the driving experience that I'll get to in a second. There are a couple of badges. So first up here on the fender, you have the Hellcat logo, you have the massive hood bulge, you have the grill, and then if you get on the inside, it says SRT absolutely everywhere. And I know that Chrysler was trying to build SRT into this specific brand at about this time, and it really does show. Even though the base part of this car, the Dodge Charger, is the same as the 300 horsepower version that I drove, it is a very, very different car in a lot of ways. Moving into this interior, it does feel a lot different than the rental car spec that I drove, of course, especially because this car was just about twice the price. Um, you do get some SRT logos here. There's one over there on the dash. You get it right here on the steering wheel. Uh, but the materials do feel a lot nicer. I do like these seats. It's this really nice material that continues over here uh, onto the door card, which is really nice. You have your regular controls for your locks and your windows and your mirrors. Uh, this material does feel like it's the exact same material as the other charger that I was in. So that's a little bit of a disappointment, I'm sure, for some people. I don't really care, honestly, but I'm sure some people care about that. This has some fake carbon fiber here. Uh, this material does feel like it's still the hard plastic, but then you have some nice soft touch points, like there's a little piece of leather right here. This is a piece of leather. Um, some of these just feel like they're Again, that same cheap material, but then you come over here to this lovely steering wheel, which is nice and grippy and soft and leather, but then you go back to these buttons. So it's kind of a conundrum between these are the really nice things that we try to add onto the Hellcat versus this is what we have to save money on because we make regular versions of this car. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna pop the trunk. All right, so this is nice and big. This is actually absolutely massive for what you get back here. I get some nice load straps down here. Let's take a look at what we get back here. Oh, okay, so you have your that's a pretty decently sized battery, and then you have a tire inflator kit. Got it. Okay, so no inflator kit. I don't really see any tools back here. It's the Chrysler logo. Pretty awesome. Nothing remarkable. That is a massive, massive seat, and it looks like they do go down. Yeah, so if you want to put these down, look at. Look, it's a family car. Yes, look, it's a family car. Very nice. Child seat anchors up there. But again, just like this and this just feels so cheap. And even this door handle. Again, it's 
it is what it is, but I'm sure some people care about it. Alrighty, so down here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this. And, ah, there it is. So besides an intake and a smaller pulley and then an exhaust, uh, the owner said that this is stock otherwise. Um, I do like some of the little Easter eggs. It says charger right here. It says SRT right there. Supercharged Hemi. Just so you get the point that this is indeed supercharged V8. All right, so enough of that. You probably want to hear this thing turn on. So a starter button right there. You press that once. It's saying, hey, you know, you're in accessory mode. Put your foot on the brake. Now oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so now that the car has started, um, gotta rev it one more time. <sighs> I freaking love it. Uh, getting 14.9 to the gallon, that's great. Uh, I do like that we have, what, a little bit more than a quarter tank left and a 80 mile range, whoops. So moving over here to the screen, I really like this. Uh, this is a little dated now because this is, you know, a couple years old. Um, however, you get all sorts of really cool things by tapping through this. Uh, really like how you can change the uh, what your car looks like on the screen, but there are a couple of different timers that you can have on here, uh, which is really cool. So if you want to drag race in this, this is you know this is really what you want. And then these gauges are are awesome. It gives you all sorts of fun things. Uh, I drove uh, a Dodge Ram, modern Dodge Ram, that had a couple of these gauges, but of course you don't get things like you know the boost pressure. Um, and then you had to go through a menu. This has all of them set there. Uh, you have G-forces. Um, you have a couple of engine things that are going on here. Oh, I just love that. That is really, really awesome. Uh, a couple of other things in terms of what you get. when you... This button. Aha! So in the SRT menu, uh, this is where you can really dial in how you want the vehicle. So uh, this is on custom mode right now, which this is how I like it, where you have traction control, which is for street, which I strongly recommend. But the suspension on track, the reason why we do that is because um, I've driven this car around enough that even the sport setting is not enough uh, to help control the weight of the car uh, when you're driving uh, on the back roads. So I like having that in track suspension because it is a little harsh on the bumps, but it keeps the car really planted. Paddle shifters on, transmission, sport mode, so it just holds the gear a little bit more and you have full power because we have da -da 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 -da, the red key. So that's what I got right now. It's the, actually the only key that Colton gave to me. So. Uh, that's what we're going to be driving. Uh, I really do like how you can have a uh, eco mode, which is kind of silly uh, to be in this car. Look, it's all green uh, because that's not the purpose of this. But you can go and you can uh, configure absolutely all of this, uh, which is great. I like that you can turn down the horsepower if you wanted to. Probably help me launch this car better. Uh, there's a valet mode um, that uh, you can use to limit the performance uh, if you do ever valet this car. Probably helpful. Uh, a couple other things, uh, you can move to sport mode just by pressing that, but I'm going to leave it on custom. Uh, there's a track mode. That is that. Um, now, a couple other things, climate control. You do have the vents, or climate control. You do have the controls right here, but you also have the controls down here, and I really like that because I like to have actual buttons. So just about all of this except for what? The steering wheel heater. That's pretty cool. And then uh, the heated and ventilated seats. I didn't see a button for that. So that's what you put on here in terms of uh, climate. And then it looks like this is under control under its own thing. Uh, navigation. Yeah, so it's not bad. I mean, I just use uh, Google Google Maps, of course. You have your phone control, your radio control, etc. It does have a pretty nice stereo. Um, it's a carbon stereo, which is pretty cool. Um, other fun things down here. Uh, you can turn your screen off really easily. Um, I actually really like that mute your stereo really easily. Again, all these controls are lovely. You do have launch control. Um, the launch control does not work very well, even uh, on dry pavement. We have this today, which is a little damp. So that's that. And then of course the SRT button brings you back into this menu. So fun fact, I have to put the uh, phone in video vertical video like this it's because my phone mount won't hold the phone when I launch it any other way so um, I'm just gonna kind of see what happens here
ahead and do this again. Okay, traction's on street. You can't even get, you cannot get anywhere close, you can't get anywhere close to flooring it. It's just not possible. Do a rolling start this time. <laughs> we are on a private road, I'm just going to remind everyone that. We're on a private road and I'm getting faster than freeway speeds and it's still just spinning the tires. Ease into the throttle. Ease into the throttle. Spinning, spinning. Ah, okay. That's just amazing. I, I just, it, this is so amazing. I'm gonna try this one more time. The sun here is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's time to, uh, it's time to go fast.
a sport mode, it just doesn't really feel like, especially when you're getting, you know, getting into it, it doesn't really feel like it can hold the, the car nearly as well as a track mode. I mean, it's incredible that a vehicle with 700 horsepower feels so civilized on the road. You have to dial in a couple of things on the suspension, on the traction control. You can never get anywhere close to touching all the way down to the floor with your... You can never get close to ever really flooring it. You don't really need that much horsepower, but my goodness, it's amazing. It, the unbridled feeling that you get of just letting those horses go is, is really like none other. But then you drive around the street like this and it feels really, really nice. Um, I mean, it, it does feel like something that you could daily drive if you could put up with the 15 miles to the gallon-ish uh, that you could really easily do. It's a very usable car. I have all of the features in the world. I have everything that I need for this to really be just about as fast as supercars of not that long ago and it's in a family sedan that's amazing I will say that after driving this now for just a little bit uh, you know it's a 45 in here and I'm doing 40 it feels uncomfortably slow it just <laughs> because it I know this car could do you know 200 miles an hour it just feels uncomfortably slow but it's Oregon it's kind of Part of the territory. So I have driven this car before. I was actually at a wedding uh, for my friends Cole and Bethany. Congratulations again. Um, and Colton shows up in this and I knew that he had had it for a while and I'm like we, we got to go right now. And so uh, we decided to go and uh, <laughs> go for a little bit of a pleasure drive and that was out in some back roads and uh, it was good. It was very fun. Um, and I mean I drove it in the back roads like one drives it in the back roads and so but this is my first time driving it around town so uh, in my other video um, I'll link that in the description below I did have the v6 very base Dodge Charger and I noted how wide it felt so um, driving around town I see that as well I, I feel like this car is really wide but at the same time it's actually manageable it's very manageable it doesn't seem like it's like over the top or anything it seems like something I could drive around it's no big deal I just happen to have 700 horsepower whenever I want to go driving around town it's no big deal um, I'm sure that I'm getting horrendous fuel economy I'm actually gonna see Ooh, trip info ah, 15.2 miles to the gallon I guess that's not bad um, I think that my friend just drives this effectively around town and then I know we live in more of a rural area, so it's not really overly stop and go or anything, but that's not as bad as I thought it would be. I have a feeling I'd probably get a little bit worse if I owned the car, but a little bit harder on the throttle. <laughs> that's like barely pressing the throttle, which is not surprising for 700 horsepower. Then again, you know, I drive cars that have I don't know, 184 horsepower is my daily driver. And then the Mercedes has 300 horse, but still 700 horsepower. This is just a completely different car in a completely different um, league of its own. Uh, this is just nuts. And that is our episode for this wonderful, crazy, and rambunctious 2017 Dodge Charger Hellcat. After dragging it around for a little bit, and thank you Colton for letting me borrow this car, I gotta say, it's really cool, but definitely not me. You probably know that I like the weirder stuff like this C43 AMG Mercedes that we cut into a truck, or my 1981 Subaru that has the EJ22 hatch in it. Now there's definitely nothing wrong with driving Mopar, of course. Muscle cars are great and exciting, they're just not for me. The best part about this though is I'm really glad that there is a market niche for people who want to drive modern day muscle cars and Dodge was like, we're gonna make a car for several years that's going to fill that need. So I'm really glad that that exists and that every once in a while I get to go ride something that's just absolutely ridiculous and really makes no sense. I'm sure a lot of you know about where Dodge is moving the SRT brand with the new electric that's coming out. I'm sure there's lots of thoughts about that as well. 
However, that being said, I, we appreciate you watching this video. We have some really great videos coming up about our 2009 Pontiac G6 convertible that we got for free. I got the top working, so I'll be making a video on that. Uh, we also have a video for a Toyota FJ that I got to drive when I was over in Colorado Springs, so thanks Brandon for that. And on top of that, we also have a Porsche 924, a 1982 that our friend Colton, also named Colton and Preston, they've been working on that as well. In the future, we will be getting the Super Justy Turbo coming up. Uh, there's lots of cars in the Bad Ideas Garage. I think that we checked that we were at 20 and a half cars, long story, and we've been selling a couple of them off in order to make room for some new things as well. Shout out also to Jamie over in Lebanon at the Bad Ideas Garage over there. He's going to be putting his V8 Subaru that I'm sure that you've seen on this channel before on a Chevy Love frame. So we had to go make room for that. So goodbye uh, Cummins number one. And also Cummins number two is getting dismantled and then the mini left and we're having lots of fun. Anyways, we really appreciate you liking and subscribing to the Bad Ideas Garage. We got lots of really great stuff coming up and we appreciate your patronage as always.